Hey Shway, it's Jay Shway, and welcome back. You know, it's been a while, why don't we get you nice and clean? On giving a second look, you realize the cat isn't exactly clean. Not surprising since up until you brought it home, it's been sitting in a dirty old box. Good point. An alley full of scattered garbage for who knows how long. You've heard that cats can keep themselves clean, but maybe this one is one of those times that a little human help couldn't hurt? You head into the bathroom and set things up, trying to remember how to wash a cat. You're definitely no expert, but you think the best way to get a cat clean would be... <sighs> Quickly? Cats don't like water, you think? So quick wash would be the way to go. Right? You decided to do everything at once, filling the tub deep with soapy, bubbly, warm water. A quick dunk here, a short scrubbing there, then rinse and dry. The cat won't even know what hit it before everything's over. You open the door and click your tongue, beckoning the cat inside. It quickly scampers in, curious of the newly available setting. You close the door so it won't be able to run out and make a mess of the apartment. Stealing yourself, you roll up your sleeves. You lift up the cat and carry it over the tub. You plan an already comp your plan's already compromised as the cat starts to struggle in your hold. You probably should have held it so it couldn't see the water. Yep, well, nothing surprising me now. It scratches your arms. You knew it wouldn't be happy about the water. You didn't think it'd be this irate. Still, as mad as it will be at you for a little while, you know this is for the best. Yep, deep scratches to your biceps startles you. Making you drop the cat into the tub. <laughs> Sorry. Shoot! K kitty The cat doesn't re-emerge, hissing and yowling like you'd know it would. You rush over and dunk your arms beneath the soapy surface, searching for the cat. What if it bumped its head and blacked out? It would drown. But you don't find the cat. Instead, what the? You watch as the water starts to darken. At first, you think it's just dirt from the cat, and feel a little vindicated about your decision. But... The water darkens further and further. Until it looks like you filled your tub with black ink, rather than water. Even the soap bubbles are translucent obsidian now. This is... Something's not right, but as soon as you have this thought... Whoa! You just feel something tugging you from under the water. You try to pull away, but your arm won't budge. Whatever it is, it pulls you closer towards the water. You try to use your free hand to release the drain plug, but when you dunk your other arm in the water without thinking, it's grabbed too. Both hands, restrains, you can't get any leverage to force yourself free. <laughs> Help! You dragged into the murky waters of the tub. You drag down, and down, and down further still. Much farther than should be possible. Or your bathtub. You. You can't breathe. You think you can't see either, but as you draw your final breath, you think you see what has been pulling you down. Something resting deep, deep down below. Something waiting for you. Heading 14, 
Baff hate her. Now, one myself, I love Baff, so I think you're just overreacting just a tad. And this time, do it nice and slow. Carefully. You think carefully. It's the way to go. Cats aren't always fond of water, so you doubt will be a fan of an excessive amount of it. So you pick the cat up and place it gently in the sink before turning on the water. Huh? Yeah, to be expected. The cat is startled, but ultimately doesn't try to run away. Nice. Oh. Okay, that's cute. You lather your hands with some soap and carefully give the cat a thorough half scrub, half massage. After a few minutes, you rinse the cat completely and gather it up in a blanket, drying it. Then you take a brush and carefully run it through the cat's fur. On one hand, I'm like, this cat's a, a frickin' demon. On the other hand, this is, a cute, this is a cute cat. The cat seems like it's in heaven as you brush it. Some hairs are sticking to you, but you don't mind. You, well, you, but you don't mind. In fact, quite a lot of fur is sticking on you. You try to brush it away, but it won't come off. Guess you're up next for a bath yourself. Oh, it's with the music! You try to ignore the fur and finish with the cat quickly, but more hair keeps sticking to you. Your hands, your arms. Before you realize it, they're covered in fur that won't come off. It's thick enough. You just try to just yank it off, but... Ah! What? Pain lances through the spot you tugged at. Upon closer inspection, you see that the hair is... Growing. Growing. Out. Of you. Oh, Why? That just sounded like someone groaning. Ah, oh. You can actually feel it now. Oh, fur growing on your back, your neck. Your face. Oh, your eyes. Your tongue! It's even growing inside your throat! <laughs> As you collapse and start to choke on the thickening fur in your esophagus, the cat leans up to lap at the fur growing on your forehead. Grooming your hair as thoroughly as you did for it earlier! I mean, it's a nice gesture. You'd think it'd be sweet. You weren't currently losing air. Still, feels nice at least. To be looked after and cared for in some way. Even if it's just for a little while longer. The cat's careful grooming is the last thing you feel. Before you're no longer able to breathe. Ending 15. Self-care buddies. Wow. These, yeah, on second thought. Do something alone. Like, what? Uh, clean the apartment. You decide that even if it's your day off, that doesn't mean you should be completely unproductive. You know you have a guest and all, but you really shouldn't put off your chores. Best to get them done while you're in the mood to do so. So for now, you get dressed, roll up your sleeves, and get to work on cleaning the apartment. At least, you try to. You sweep the living room. You wipe the kitchen counter. You, okay, you don't make your bed, but who actually does that anyway? I, so true, I, I make this before videos. I don't do it in the morning. Still, you notice that no matter how much you clean up, you keep finding more messes than when you started. You peek over there at the cat. You suspect that it might be the culprit behind this mystery. Well, it's just a cat. I mean, look at it. But every time you rush to check on it or catch it in the act. Don't trust them. Don't trust cats. You always find a napping in the living room. You keep cleaning, but the cat, or 
something. He keeps leaving more and more mess in his wake. What kind of messes are we talking about? Like, dishes left out? Trash on the grounds? Keep cleaning. You keep cleaning, but there's just more mess. And more. And more. When you finally stop and look around you. Oh. You don't even recognize your home anymore. There's piles of junk everywhere. Do you even own this much stuff? You don't remember ever buying or receiving most of it. The pile tower, the piles tower over you. You feel claustrophobic. The stench of garbage is overwhelming, despite your hands feeling raw from all the cleaner fluid you've been using. Your eyes still burn from the bleach. You need some air. You need to get out of here. <laughs> oh my god. F you, cat. You hear a crash and see a teacup you're certain you don't own smashed on the floor. <laughs> it looks so menacing. You look up and see the cat perched on a teetering pile of china and kitchen appliances. It carefully nudges another teacup from the pile, sending it careening to the ground. You don't even flinch as it shatters. Instead, <laughs> you start to chuckle. <laughs> Suddenly, you're laughing. It's so hilarious <laughs> that tears start running down your face. I knew it was you! You did this, didn't you? You pick up the largest piece of ceramic from the broken teacups. Didn't you? And throw it at the cat. Huh? The cat dodges by leaping off the pile. The pile sways. It sways. It's falling. Oh, you might want to get out of the way. It's falling towards you. Oh my god. Okay. The fact that it went past the, the window where all the images are, that got me. That got me. You can't move. You're buried. The pile fell on top of you. Broken shards of fine ch china and sharp utensils are piercing your skin, your organs. Your bones feel loose and limp, crushed under the heavy appliances. Warm liquid pools under you. With the last of your strength, you listen as the cat pads over to you before lying down and purring sleepily. Yeah. A nap sounds pretty good. Ending one. A not so clean getaway. Ending one. All oh, right, we got ending zero, didn't we? Yeah, we got ending zero. Uh, ending one, not so clean getaway. You try to clean your apartment, but apparently you're not very good at it. And then we got. No, I didn't read this one. You can't run. Apparently, you can't hide either. Uh, and then bath hater. Note to self. Do not throw cats into a bathtub full of water. Ending 15, self-care buddies. After you give the cat the full spa treatment, it tries its best to return the favor. Well, um, catch the cat in the act. This is gonna go fine. How are you supposed to finish cleaning up? This little imp is making a menace of itself. No, you know the cat's the culprit. You consider locking it up in the bathroom, at least until you clean the rest of the apartment. But it just doesn't seem fair when you don't actually have any proof. You need to investigate this further. You need proof. Not just, not just for the sake of your sanity, but more importantly, for the sake of cleanliness. You start to clean again and peek behind you, catching near glimpses of a paw here or a tail there. 
But as with earlier, when you rush back to the living room, the cat is still sleeping. Okay. You want to play, cat? Let's play. This time you decide to lay a trap. One of your feline friend won't be able to resist. You tackle the kitchen island count. Yeah, you tackle the kitchen island counter and it, give it the works. What the hell? Oh, you're cleaning it. That's what you mean. It's glistening by the time you're done. It's so clean. You drop kick anyone who even thought of eating off of it. The <laughs> perfect trap for your little clay cleaning saboteur. <laughs> Oh crap, uh, you whistle innocently as the as you exit the room and hide around the corner of the entryway to the hall. From the angle you're at, you have a perfect view of the cat in the island counter. There's no way you won't catch the culprit in the act now. If it really isn't the cat, maybe you'll give it a treat as an apology for your suspicions. But as you deliberate, if you, f if you should stop by the grocery store to get some fish, the cat starts to. Shift? It's back. It's back that was rising and falling evenly moments ago. It's now rippling in small tremors, like an agitated wave on a black sea. It's shuddering. Jeez, uh, it's bubbling. Oh, it's bulging. What the fuck? What the hell? You gape in disbelief as another cat bursts out of the still, still sleeping feline you've taken home with you. You're fairly certain that's not how cats give birth. And the next bird, but a little weird. But more importantly, you watch cat number two shake itself off before leaping on to the counter rolling around on top of it and leaving fur and grime in its wake. Hmm. Probably should have given it a bath earlier. That didn't go so well. You feel like your mind is lagging behind the reality of the discovery you've just made. But you don't seem capable of thinking beyond smaller observations. What? For example... Though the hows and whys of what you're witnessing elude you, the more pertinent question that strikes you is that if the original cat is still sleeping and the clone cat is busy making yet another mess then where are all the other clones what the fuck suddenly the two cats look directly at you in perfect unison yeah. their eyes pin you to the spot with their intensity but you realize with the familiar, sinking feeling of being watched from behind that they're not the only ones looking at you. You slowly turn around. Oh, oh! Packed in the hall behind you, from the floor to the ceiling, is living breathing, writhing wall of cats, of clones, all piled on top of each other, glowing golden eyes of every cat in the undulating wall of black, pure black fur. Every single eye is trained on you. Out of fear and a sheer desperate need to distance yourself from this blight on reality and order, you take a single step back. And in response, the wall just breaks. All the cats are stampeding over you. It'd be a kind of cute if their soft paws weren't hiding claws as sharp as knives. You try to protect yourself, but there's just too many of them. Blood leaks steadily from your scratches. You feel dizzy. With what little strength you have, you turn your head and watch as the cats tear through carpet and upholstery, knock over vases and dishes and lamps, 
claw at the walls. It's going to take forever to clean this up, you think? Maybe you'll tackle it all again later, right after you take a short nap. With an annoyed sigh, you breathe your last breath. Ending two. Double trouble. You found the ones responsible for making a mess of your apartment. <laughs> Those little pranksters. I just hit load. I just hit load. What the f What? Eyeball? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I was just so tired. Of everything. Not you. Never you. But I couldn't be the person you deserve. Couldn't ever hope to be. You were so amazing. Smart and talented and independent. You shined. But in comparison, I... Damn it. So, so stupid. So... Worthless. But when it approached me, it didn't tell me that it wanted me. It needed me. Maybe that's what I wanted all along. Wanting to be so fleeting, but to be needed? There was nothing I wouldn't give to have someone tell me that I mattered to them. That they needed me. You're walking. Right. Of course. It's the first time in a while that you felt like going out. And you're... Actually, glad that you did. Okay. The weather is absolutely perfect today. That's a good sign. Right? Maybe your luck is finally starting to turn around. You tentatively allow yourself to feel excited for the possibilities of where you could go, or what you could do. Maybe even who you could meet. You're so deep in thought that you almost miss it. <sighs> Damn it. Huh? What was that? Curiosity guiding your steps, you follow the sound to the entrance of a lonely alleyway. The sunlight only just manages to reach down in between the tall building buildings on either side. You timidly enter the alley and walk forward, the loose gravel and scattered debris on the ground softening your steps. Finally, the sound source comes to view in the warm, almost ethereal light of the alley. At the end of the alley is a big cardboard box. Is a cat! Huh? Guess that should have been obvious. It's just repeating! What? Did I finish all the endings? Wait, did I? An interesting looking cat, its pretty yellow eyes shine like gold amongst the dark sea of its black fur. It puts its front paws on the edge of the box and looks up at you. You look so familiar. <laughs> oh, you look familiar. Yeah, you do, right? Then again, it is a cat. Not many different ways for a 
standard cat, black hat to look, after all. This one sure is a cutie, though. You just look... It's not glaring at you or hissing at you. For getting this close like other stray cats here have in the past. It's just... Sitting there, patiently. Waiting for you to do something. It's giving me another option. I'm going to save here. Yeah, we have the catch the cat in the act. Yeah, I have so many other options here. Okay, well, uh... Don't take it home? Don't take the cat home. Sadly, as cute as the cat is... You'd never take this thing home with you. What the f You just can't take it home with you. You're a responsible adult. Y you are... With rent and bills to pay for, not to mention you need to buy food to survive too. There's no way you could care for a cat long term, right? You barely afford this little outing on your day off. Ugh. What to do? Huh. Let me go save here as well. Feed the cat. The cat must be hungry, right? You can't imagine that... It's had much to eat if it's so attached to this box it's in. Though, it doesn't exactly seem malnourished, either. Surely it must have left the box to search for food, then. For some reason, something in the back of your mind tells you this is not that's not the case. And not to think on it any further. Well, either way, you can't exactly enjoy your day out knowing you left behind a hungry cat, especially when you could have done something to help. So, what to do about the hungry kitty? Oh, jeez. Uh, check pockets? You dig into your pockets. You find a small string in your left pocket. Not very helpful. The string is far too short. An eager and ex- <laughs> That was the first time I played with the string. In your right pocket? A bar of chocolate. You find a chocolate bar. You know you can't give that to cats, right? It is. Nope. It's not even expired. Quite the find, indeed. You're about to offer it to the cat, when suddenly you're hit with guilt as you remember something gut curdling. Chocolate is toxic to cats. Oh my gosh, I'm so. You resist the urge to vomit at your near mistake. Why is. You feel so guilty, you throw the chocolate bar away to a nearby trash bin. An almost cat killer doesn't deserve chocolate. You go back to the cat, barely able to stand its innocently oblivious expression. It doesn't even know that you almost... Uh, I'm so sorry, I don't even know what... I don't even know what to say. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right, you're right, yeah. I'm, I'm too hard on myself. You're a... horrible... person. You know what? Just stay there, I'll be right back. You leave the alley and return to a whole fish you bought at a nearby grocery shop. It was a bit pricey, but it was the least you could do. The cat eagerly accepts your offering, munching happily at the fish after you place it in the box. You want to smile at the sight, but you just feel so awful. Sorry again. The cat seemingly pays you no mind as you slip back out of the alley. Not feeling you deserve a peaceful day out, you decide just to head back home. <sighs> On the way home, you notice more cats than usual, watching you from behind their hiding spots. But you try to not think about it. You can't help but wonder if they know what you nearly done. What? It's not like you meant to hurt anyone. Right? You finally reach your apartment building. You're about to unlock the door when... Oh my god! Okay, I get it. I get it. You look behind you only to see dozens of cats standing there. Looking at you. They see you feeding the cat in the alley, and thought you had more food all for them? I'm sorry, I don't have any more food for you. 
None of them move an inch. You're starting to feel a little unnerved when finally a single cat pushes its way to the front. And... Oh? Oh, it's you! Oh, it's... Held carefully between his teeth is the chocolate bar you thrown away earlier. It places the chocolate bar down in front of you, in front of it, before looking back up at you. All the cats looking up at you. You can feel their judgment. You feel your sins weighing heavily on your back. But without the money to buy enough food for all of them, you don't even know what to do. Beg for forgiveness? You collapse your knees and bow low as you start to earnestly beg for their forgiveness. I'm so sorry. I swear. I I'd do anything to make it up to all of you, but... But you're out of options. Suddenly. <coughs> you feel something stir in your stomach and swim its way up to your throat, closing off your airway as it tries to force its way out of your esophagus. <coughs> Finally, succeeds with aid from your helpless gagging. What the? Lying on the ground in front of you. Is a flopping fish. You just threw up a living fish. What the hell? The cats come rushing forward, all tearing hungrily at the fish. You're... Oh, you're happy to finally be of help, truly. Ah, uh, yeah. You throw up another fish. Oh! And another. And another. And... Your stomach hurts. You're getting... dizzy. You fall to your knees. Tears and snot are streaming down your face by the time you cough up a final, tiny, bloody fish and collapse forward. Your throat and stomach both burn in a way that feels dangerous. You start to fade out. Despite the pain... You strangely feel a more overwhelming sense of hopeful pride that you've made up for your disgusting actions, that you've been forgiven. Oh, what'd that say? The sound of happy cats munching away at their fish fills your ears. Then... Oh... You feel something being nudged into your hand. It feels like... It's the bar of chocolate you found in your pocket. <laughs> you smile weakly. You successfully atoned, but you don't really have the strength to eat your reward. Sadly, the last taste of your mouth as you leave this mortal coil doesn't get to be that of chocolate, but of raw fish. And in 24... Finishing? Fishing for pardon. I can't read. Jeez. That one was just... Messed up. I'm, that's all the way down here. Okay. No, wait. I need to go... Here. Then watch a movie. You're not tired enough for a nap, but you're too lazy to get started on any of your chores. So you decide to watch a movie. You get dressed in your favorite pajamas, make some popcorn with an obscene amount of butter, and ho head over to your armchair. Only to discover that the cat is already napping in it. You frown a little in thought. Your couch isn't the best angle for optimal TV viewing pleasure, and you could and you don't feel like pushing it around and having it and having to put it back later. The only option you have left are to sit on the floor or move the cat and reclaim your throne. Sit on the floor, you know what? I'm gonna give this cat a f***ing break. You decide to sit on the floor, the cat is the guest after all, and you pride yourself on being a good host, if nothing else. Well, at least you would if you ever had a guest over before. 
You grab a blanket and some pillows and make a comfy nest in front of the chair. You pop in a random movie from your collection and can tell instantly it's one of your favorite horror films. You've seen it a few times already, but it never fails to get your blood pumping. A few minutes in, and you're invested, getting reacquainted with the story and characters. The scares won't come until later, but you feel for some reason, you feel like something is watching you from behind. You know it's probably nothing, but you feel compelled to check it anyway. You peek over your shoulder. <laughs> oh my god. Only to jump out of your skin, jostling a few pieces of popcorn out of the bowl in your lap. The cat is awake and looking right at you. Oh. You take a uh, calming breath, recovering from your heart, nearly lurching out of your chest, and immediately feel foolish. It was just as the cat, of course. It was so quiet, you've forgotten it was right behind you. Even though it was the whole reason you're sitting on the floor in the first place. You shakily pick up the remote, intending to rewind some of the parts you missed. However, as soon as you press the rewind button, the TV shuts off. You blink, confused. Nothing else turned off. The kitchen's dimmed light was still on. The digital clock was still glowing, and the movie player was still rewinding. The power clearly didn't go out. So why? You feel a chill run down your spine as you catch the cat's reflection in the dark TV screen. It's still looking at you. Cats stare, silly. It's kind of their thing. Right? And you're a new addition to its life. Of course it's going to study you closely to see if you're trustworthy. As you mentally reassure yourself, you turn the TV back on. What? The TV's on, but the movie isn't what's playing on screen. It's... What the f... It's you. You watch yourself frown on screen as you feel your brow furrow in tandem. It's like a footage of you in real time. Like you're being recorded. You feel the familiar sensation of your mind focusing on small details to avoid the bigger picture of your current situation. Avoiding the questions of how this is happening, of who or what it's, it is doing this, and why. Ugh. Suddenly, your mirrored self smiles and waves at you, all on its own. You don't wave back, too stunned to move. Then you, the you on, sc on the screen doesn't seem to mind, though. It then stands up, walks out of frame, and... Ugh! Terrified yell rips out of your mouth before you can think to stifle it. On screen in the chair is the cat. But it's wrong. Ooh! It's become a large swollen mass of black fur. It's twitching, pulsing a rhythmic with its slow, almost methodical breaths. Its mouth a yawning entrance to a black abyss, framed by a set of teeth that looks very, very sharp. Glowing eyes bulge all over its body. It's still looking at you. It doesn't even acknowledge your on-screen persona as they walk back into frame and pet it, almost lovingly. Then, the you inside the TV touches one of the cat's... one of the cat's fangs. You flinch at a sudden sharp pain in your palm. You look down and sure enough, your hand is bleeding. You're not particularly afraid of blood, but, for some reason, the sight of it leaking out of you sends another chill down your back. A thought, clear and terrible, flashes across your mind. It's not just the mutated cat in the, in the TV that's watching you. Is it? Don't look behind you. 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 You watch helplessly as your on-screen self smiles and nods at you almost encouragingly. They stand in front of the cat's gaping jaws. They look into the dark depths. And as, you t as you're torn between the horrifying realization of what's about to happen and the gripping wonder of what they see looking back at them from the deep, deep darkness, 
they jump in. Darkness is a sudden presence all around you, pressing in, holding you down, and yet somehow also feel weightless. You can't tell if you're falling, but it doesn't feel like you're laying, on, laying down or standing either. You feel warm. You feel cold. You feel everything. You feel nothing. You feel nothing. Ending three. Silent film. You let the cat sit on your favorite chair and watch a scary movie together. Just an ordinary movie night. Reclaim your throne. You square your shoulders. Sorry, kitty. That's my spot. You pick up the cat and place it on the floor. It's clearly upset with you. When you try to pet it as an apology, it dodges your hand and scampers away. You shrug and put on a random movie before nestling into your chair. It's some horror film that you love to heckle from beginning to end. Nothing but an endless string of pointless jump scares. Do the writers not know the meaning of the word subtle? What was that? Was that the bathroom? The cat must have gotten in the medicine cabinet or knocked something over. Calming your thundering heart with a deep breath, you pause the movie and get up to investigate. Whoa! The cat dashes between your legs from the hall. Fleeing the scene only makes you look guiltier, you know. You're even more reluctant to see the damage now. You just want to relax and watch your, your bad horror movie, but the cat's going to be taking the chair over again. You go into the bathroom and turn on the light. Just as you thought, all the stuff in your medicine cabinet is scattered on the tile. You sigh. At least none of it looks broken or damaged. You crouch down and pick everything up. Like... Did the door just... close? Or did you bump it when you crouched down, or... Well, at least the cat can't come, come in and make more of a mess this way. What the f- Was that something in the window? Or did it turn night and something peered on the toilet? The lights? Didn't you just replace the bulbs? They weren't faulty, were they? You never remember to hold on to your receipts for situations like these. You doubt you'll be able to get your money back. You stand up. You shake out the pain in your knees from crouching and open your medicine cabinet. Carefully, you place everything back where they belong, making sure nothing is missing. <laughs> Fuck! <sighs> I looked away for like a second when I looked back, I just saw that. Oh my god. God. <sighs> Oh, yeah, no, that's my reaction. You jump back, slamming against the wall, covering your mouth. You look back, back up at the mirror on the medicine cabinet door to see... Nothing. N nothing? What the hell? Something, something was. You know something just now. You know you saw something just now. You know you did. Right? <laughs> just a... <clears throat> You saw something. I hate you. You rush out of the bathroom and slam the door behind you without looking. You enter the hall and... No. No, 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 no. You shield yourself with your arms and... Nothing. Nothing again. You peek through your fingers and see... Just your usual hallway. You. You don't feel very good. You need to sit down. You carefully make your way back to the dark living room. Try not to overwhelm your senses anymore. You already have. Maybe you should watch something a little more lighthearted. Or just lie down instead. You know? You don't know. It's a little hard to think. You just need to sit down. Stumbling forward, you reach for your chair and you sit down on the cat. But... What? Oh, yeah. It's nothing. At all. Just the cat, sitting down in your chair again. Looking up at you. Curiously.
but it's enough. Your heart lurched so harshly of a mixture of fear and anticipation that it completely gives out. Your eyes roll up into your skull. You feel yourself falling back. Hi. You're dead before you even hit the ground. <laughs> Ending four, real subtle, really. The cat, like, did all that because I said subtle, or, I don't, I don't know. God, I hate you. I hate you so much. Ending four, real subtle. You look back at the chair from the cat and enjoyed some silly little jump scares alone. Jeez, all right. You def- Oh, wait, what? You definitely saw something. Does anything change? Okay, so it's just the same. Okay. You gotta take a nap. You're a little tired from the events of the day. Making life-changing choices that can- Like committing to the responsibility of caring for another living creature. Really. Wears you out. You could- You could definitely use a nap. You head to your room and get dressed for in pajamas before you decide to grab a glass of water from the kitchen. You head back to your bedroom, ready for a much-needed nap. Whoa! Only for the cat to race past you through the open door and jump in the middle of the bed. It takes its time kneading the sheets before settling down and closing its eyes. Well, that was fast. You frown thoughtfully. Now that your mind's on it, you find yourself really craving a nap in your own bed. There's no way you're settling for sleep on the couch. Certainly not the armchair. Which means you should... Well, sleep next to it. Yeah, I'm gonna sleep next to it, but let me save. Uh, sleep next to the cat. You shrug. What's the harm in sharing the bed, right? You both had a long day, after all. You try to carefully avoid jostling the cat as you lay down, but immediately scoots over and curls up against you anyway. Aw, this is so cute. You smile. Sweet dreams. Uh -huh. You feel like you slept for a long time. You feel a warm weight on your back. But you don't see the... Oh. Mystery solved, then. You feel... Comfortable? You consider getting up. But as soon as the thought enters your head, your mind fills with the static and deep sense of... Disapproval. Not yet, then. Okay? The cat, jostled by your attempts of movement, needs painfully at your back before settling down again, falling back asleep. You fall back onto slumber too. It's a night. You want to get up. Uh, yeah. Ugh. Claws digging your back like a warning. Tomorrow then, right? Does that mean yes? It's morning. You'll be late for work. But the cat doesn't bulge. You don't even try to get up this time. You just close your eyes and drift off again. It's... It's the next day. This is the last several days. And it hasn't been weeks. Or longer. You're not quite sure. You're hungry. You don't know how long you've been lying down. You feel sore on your back, but also on your stomach, your arms, your face, everywhere. You can't remember your last meal, the last time you drank anything. You've been sleeping all this time, but you feel exhausted, more tired than you think you've ever felt in your life. It feels like a giant hand is pressing you into the bed. You can't remember the last time you even considered moving, but somehow, you know. That you need to go back to sleep anyway. Everything will be fine if you just go back to sleep. Huh? You think you're hallucinating when the cat finally stirs. It stretches languidly, languidly before hopping off your back. You hear its feet padding through your still open bedroom door, its steps fading down the hall. You don't open your eyes. You don't. Move. You're afraid. You don't even remember how. You're afraid that the static will return if you try. But you eventually do try. You try to pop, prop yourself up on your arm. 
It's thinner than you've ever seen it. Thinner than you think should be possible. Oh! The arm snaps under the weight of your body and crumbles on the desk and the butt bed sheets. It doesn't hurt in the slightest, as if you've had, your nerves have dried up and become as useless as, well, as useless as you feel in general. Just how long have you been lying in bed? You don't even have much time to think about it. Your failed attempt at sitting up sends you tumbling over the side of the bed like a rag doll. You think you're probably closer to being a ceramic doll as your body shatters instantly upon impact with the floor. Oh my god. Your head rolls towards the door, letting you watch as the rest of your strewn body parts crack and crumble and turn into broken ruin as your co consciousness begins to fade. Hi! The cat strolls into view then, poking and prodding at the remains of your brittle limbs. Bad kitty, you try to say. You think your jaw might have snapped off earlier as well. Almost as if sensing your attention, the cat walks over to you. Well, your head, at least. And watch you and you watch with your final conscious seconds as it lays down, curling its body around you. It feels warm. Well Maybe another nap couldn't hurt. Ending six. Just a cat nap. Um, resting's good, but you should get up and stretch every now and then, and eat and drink. Uh, move the cat. You tentatively nudge the cat in an attempt to make it move on its own. It doesn't budge in the slightest. Move the cat. Uh, keep trying. This is your bed. You push a little more firmly this time. The cat sounds annoyed with you. With the cat, again, you will sleep in your own bed. The cat opens one yellow eye and slides it up to look at you. Is its voice a little deeper than before? <laughs> what if I click this? <laughs> yeah, move the cat. Move the cat. You move forward, ready to shove the cat with all your might. Gah! You're thrown back by some invisible force and crash into the dresser before falling to the ground. Ugh. When knocked out of you, you look up in the daze. Y you, you don't quite comprehend what you're seeing. A strong, swirling wind is picked up, throwing items all over the place, as if a mi miniature hurricane has taken form in your room. And right there in the center of it all is the cat. Hovering in the air above the bed, its eyes open glowing like molten lava. Oh my god. Stop! You watch as the vortex rip it, rips open in the center of your bed, and a panic swirling wind turns into a vacuum, dragging you towards the bed. Ugh! Your nails catch and tear as you desperately try to cling to the carpet, to the floorboards, and any piece of furniture within your reach. Bloody fingers slipping clumsily on every surface. But there is nothing you can do. As you're, you touch the vortex, your body starts to disintegrate. Tiny particles of your body separating and floating into nothing. The last thing you see is the cat landing nimbly on the bed and kneading at your sheets before it curls up and falls back asleep. Ending 5. Do not disturb. Oh, okay. Is this one? You shouldn't bother cat while it's trying to nap. Um, I'll do one more, and I just want to finish this one. All the cats are chasing me after f almost feeding the cat the chocolate. Go inside. You decide to cut your losses and head inside. Your sins weigh down on you, but you're only human. What more can you do? Jeez. You try to ignore the yowling of the neighborhood cats as you go about your chores. You consider preparing dinner, but how could you enjoy it knowing how hungry those poor cats outside are? The ones you've wronged. You decide to take a bath and go straight to bed without dinner. A fitting punishment for someone like you. You forego the fancy bath bubbles because you don't deserve them and sink, and sink into the water without a, with a sigh. Your mind races, but you can't really think of any immediate solution. 
It doesn't require more money. You wish there was something, anything, you could do to make this things right. Suddenly, your legs start to feel really itchy. You try to lift one to see what's going on, but what rises out of the water isn't a pair of legs. Oh! It's... It's a fishtail? You, you feel dizzy at the sight. Maybe you're hallucinating from the stress. You try to climb out of the tub to cool your head, but instead of your hand rising up to brace itself... Red <laughs> fish fin stretches out to plop on the rim. It's too weak to hold your weight, and you're startled by the sight. <laughs> that you slip and smack your head on the side of the bed, so passing out almost immediately. You're awake, you think, anyway. You open your eyes, and... You're underwater? You must have slid beneath the surface of the bathwater. You gasp instinctively. Except, not really. A bubble simply floats out of your mouth. Up, up, up. To the surface. You're broke as heck. So you know your bathtub isn't that big. Did... Did you... Shrink? But how? And even if there was a reasonable answer, it wouldn't explain how you haven't drowned yet. You swim to the edge of the tub and see the truth in your shadow silhouette. You've been turned into a fish? This, this isn't possible. You don't get any time to ponder over this, unfortunately, because just then, shadow looms from you over ab from above. You look up and see the cat? It peers down at you from beyond the water's surface. And then... Then you realize this is the answer. This is how you're meant to atone. With a heavy heart, you swim up to the surface. The cat scoops you up, tossing you out of the tub and onto the bathroom tiles. As you flop around, gasping for air, or water, you realize the cat wasn't alone. Dozens of hungry eyes peer down at you. You can hear the yowling of what sounds like hundreds of cats outside your bathroom window. You send one last look at the cat before closing your eyes and accepting your fate. As the cats descend upon you, tearing at your flesh, you find yourself mourning the fact that you're not even big enough defeat all of them. Even in the end, you couldn't properly atone. Your efforts, your life, all of it, amounting to nothing. Ending 25, Seafood Sacrifice. Hi. Why are you different? Have I reached... I've reached 18 endings. That's not enough to cause anything special to happen. Uh, it could be every nine something happens. Okay, um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, this game is amazing and I, I'm having a, a blast. Um, so I'm thinking two more parts. Um, glad you caught on the video. Thank you for making this. Again, I'm going to wait to rate this until I, I finish it. Really hope you enjoyed. And I hope I made your day just a little bit brighter, even though this cat probably made it darker. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.